Um, so I, I, I found this article that somebody had posted about work from home. Uh, I read about a half of it. I had, I had a hard time reading it. Um, not because I can't like I can't read or anything. I'm not Anna Kasparian, which is a reference to what Roger Waters said about Anna Kasparian, where he called her illiterate on a live stream. Uh, hilarious. And wow, what a slam. <laughs> Legendary rock star Roger Waters called you illiterate. Fuck. <laughs> but um, I, I, the reason why I stopped reading the article is because I couldn't figure out what the author's deal was. Like the article talked about how the bosses are freaking out about people working from home. Right in the beginning of the pandemic, that's what you had to do. You couldn't have a lot of people in an enclosed space. That was something that wasn't recommended because it would spread the virus very quickly. And then you get home and you spread it to your family and they spread it. You know, so it, it became a lot of jobs had to transition to in, into work from home. That's just what needed to happen. Uh, but now we're finding out that a lot of jobs don't need you to go into a fucking office and sit in a cubicle because you're more productive when you're at home and in your own environment and you're more comfortable and you don't have to wear a fucking three piece suit all the time and sit in traffic for two hours and be miserable in a fucking car. And you, you, you know, your blood pressure is now down. You're more healthy. You can exercise. You can, you know, a lot more people are finding out. Yeah. We're, 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 more if not as productive working from home as we were when we had people coming into the office and that and so the author points that out and he points out like oh man the bosses are concerned but then he shifts and he goes well if you have full-time employment they own you and that's the way that corporations work and that's okay it's like wait what the fu what is your fucking perspective so i just stopped reading it because it was just very confusing um and it it it, it sounded like like people that say that they're centrists, right? Uh, and, and and they always have to find a way to like justify every. And it's just like you're not justifying it. You, you're you're just confused. You're just confused, or you just don't want to take a stance, right? Like like I have friends that do that, and it it, it bugs me, you know, when I'm talking to them because they're always like, "Let's look at the fascist perspective." <laughs> like what? <laughs> I want to justify a racist piece of shit real quick. You got to consider and say, no, no, let's not though. Let's not because most of history is justifying racists and fascists. Like, can we, can we do the opposite of that for a little bit? But I've been thinking about this work from home thing. Uh, Cause I have a lot of friends that uh, work in an office. Right. Uh, and now they're finding out that, Oh yeah, we're, we're going to open things back up and, all that sort of jazz. And uh, some some people don't want to go back into the office. Um, I, I have a couple of friends who were like, hey, my office is doing exclusively work from home because it's better. Uh, and, you know, like they're going to downsize their brick and mortar building, save a bunch of money and hopefully give everybody a raise. Uh, doubtful that that'll happen. I think Twitter did that, right? Like, I think Jack Dorsey was like, we're shutting down the more brick and mortar building and everybody's going to work from home. Uh, well, yeah, but I'm not going to pay anybody. I'm just going to kind of pocket those savings. I, I very much doubt that Jack Dorsey fucking uh, increased or, or gave everybody a raise after he was like, oh, everybody's going to exclusively work from home. Um, I think that's what he said. I think that was Jack Dorsey. Uh, the company I use for, for my ticketing stuff, Ticket Leap. Uh, when I was making an account with them and I had a conversation that that's right, guys, I talked to a real person about tickets and setting things up like a real human being. Uh, but even, even that person, uh, I believe the gentleman's name is Zach, uh, who is, who is my account uh, manager or what have you. Uh, even he said like, yeah, we're all working from home. There, there's no point in us not. Everything can be done online and, and we have a server that we work off of and it's great. And I think a majority of people, or, or, or at least from what I'm seeing, a majority of people prefer working from home rather than going to the office. And bosses are freaking out. They, they legitimately are, right? They're, they're, there's people, like one of the things, that this is pointed out in the article, 
is uh, this fucking billionaire corporate CEO guy was like, oh, you know, the thing that makes me concerned about working from home is that it's, a, it's you know, it's a bunch of people that are getting paid a full-time salary for part-time work. And it's like, asshole, they're doing the same amount of work. It's just they're getting it done quicker. And people are getting back to them quicker. So they're getting done with what they need to for the day in probably like half or, you know, 60% of the time. They're like, oh, well, they're going to do their startups and their and their own business things by themselves on my dime. And it's like they're not. You're, they're salaried. Where in, where in being salaried does it say that you have to work X, X, from, from this time to this time? That's an hourly wage. And if you want to pay them hourly, that's great. You can clock in and and but that's the other thing, right? So so the hourly exploitation of white collar workers is probably gonna go by the wayside because of this. You're gonna have to salary them, and you're gonna have to salary them pretty darn well. Right? Like I don't think somebody that is um, I don't know, web developer or 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 um someone that works in IT, if you offer them like a $25,000 salary because like, Oh, well you're working for They're not going to fucking take that job. They're going to be like, eat a dick, go away. Do, do what my hat says. You're going to have to pay these people a little bit more. And, and there's no justification that they can't, right? Because they don't have a brick and mortar building to hide behind now. Oh, we have to pay the power and the air conditioning and the heating builds and the plumbing costs and this, that, and the third. And Oh man, there's a landlord we have to take care of. Not anymore, Eric. Not anymore, there ain't. So there's no reason why everybody can't get a 25% raise. Especially if they've made your, made your company more productive. Absolutely no fucking reason for it. Oh, there is a reason for it. It's because you're a greedy sack of shit. Am I being too harsh? Good. Because I think we've coddled billionaires long enough. Now, obviously, you know, there's some challenges when it comes to work from home and not everybody is suited to work from home. Some people probably don't like it. Um, you know, some people probably prefer b sitting in a car for an hour. Maybe it gives them some time to think, you know, maybe get, that's their alone time. That's their downtime to just be and, and enjoy a podcast or do whatever the fuck they wanted to do. Right. And, and they like being in an office environment. They like being in a cubicle. It helps them concentrate. That's not for me. It's, it never helped me concentrate. I always hated being in a cubicle. I always hated, um, you know, the, the fact that uh, I, my boss was going to watch me over the shoulder, fucking make, you know, whatever, like design something. Like, I hated that shit. Hated it. Some people need that, though. Because when you work from home, there there are distractions, you know, Um that was something for me when, when I was no longer in an office environment uh, that I had to overcome. Um, and I, and I realized that pretty quickly, uh, you know, I, um, I like having things on in the background and I really, I kind of had to realize this pretty quick is like, I can't have a show that I'm actually interested in, or it's like something I'm watching for the first time on in the background because I will, get distracted by it and I, and I and I will stop doing my work and I'm just staring at you know I think when 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 I when I got shit canned from GNC uh and started doing like really doing stand up without a safety net um breaking bad I'd never seen breaking bad so I was like I'll put that on in the background and I would catch myself just staring at the screen for 20 minutes watching the show it's a very captivating show so, you know, there are distractions. You got streaming services. Like right now on my TV that's in my room, I have uh, an old T-shirt that's pretty ripped up and fucked up. Um, you know, like the like the whole arm sleeve is now ripped. It's it's a shirt I got in college. So it's like over 10 years old. Uh, you know, I, I, I run everything to the ground. But it's covering my TV. Why? Because then I don't have to get distracted by it. I look at that and I go, ah, that's right, it's covered. It's not time. Some people don't have that, right? That's not part of their personality. I had to learn it. I had to figure that out. You know, now it's like I what I need to have, I, I, I it's either silence or music in the background. Or if I'm doing emails or, you know, social media crap, I, I put on some content creators. 
You know, like I've got uh, Eleanor Goldfield's interview with Ted Alexandra going. I've got uh, what's going on in Colombia with the general strike. I've got uh, Sabby Sabs talking about Jimmy Dore, maybe. She did a response video to something, but I was. Those are the videos I got queued up to play. And I catch up on my creators that way when I do my, you know, emails and booking and stuff. That's fine. That's something that I, you know, can can just pay attention to and let it run in the background. Again, those are disciplines that you learn. You you teach yourself that. When I was first doing it, I was bad at it. But some people don't want that at all. So anyway, this is a very long and roundabout way of saying we should have a choice. You should have a choice of whether you want to work from home or whether you do want to come into the office. Which still means that most corporations are going to have to scale back on their brick and mortar buildings, right? Especially like white collar corporations. Obviously, the service industry jobs are still going to be around. You know, the the the, the unfortunately the Amazon warehouse is still going to be around. Um, there's going to be certain jobs like like if you want to go to a coffee shop, you can't work from home at a coffee shop unless we invent uh, transporters and make them affordable. Which the only way that would happen is if we'd reject capitalism and build a whole new uh, economic system that is uh, built on compassion and logic and taking care of each other. And I don't see that happening uh, in the next five years. So, yeah. So I think transporters are a little far away. I mean, you could be a coffee barista. Uh, if we had that, I feel like Star Trek and like in like the Star Trek world, like you could have a barista that works from home and you get an order on an app and they go, boop, OK, transport there, done. That'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. So. I think it should be a choice, right? In terms of productivity, it kind of makes sense to me that you you would be more productive in in your house environment i i like working from home a lot i really do I, I i do feel like i'm far more productive i like making my own hours you know like if i get up a little bit late that's that's okay i'm i'm literally like going downstairs making a cup of coffee and boom i'm back on the computer and i'm only like 10 minutes late whereas like if i get up late for work shit you know, I got to run. I'm panicked. I got to get in the car. And uh, and now I'm, instead of being 10 minutes late, I'm 45 minutes late. Then I got to stay late. Whole big thing. When I worked at GNC, which was uh, the last corporate job that I had, I did, you know, um, just basic web design stuff for them. I would, I mean, I would get done with stuff and then it has to go and go through the approval process. And um, I would just sit and wait. You know, I would I would send a, a design over to my art director. I'd wait for about 45 minutes, and then she'd get back to me. And I'd make the changes, it would get approved. Then she has to send it out to four other people, who then have to send it out to eight other people. And then they have to get back. So, you know, now I'm waiting another hour and a half for a second set of corrections. And while I was at this corporate job, you know, I, at first, I, I didn't know what to do and I was very nervous. And then I said, fuck it, this is a huge waste of time. I'm twiddling my fucking thumbs here. I'm sitting here with my dick in my hands. Like, I don't, uh, that's an HR violation. I can't keep doing that. It's not great. So I started writing. You know, I would work on little pieces for my website or, you know, a storytelling show or I edit some stand up or I do some emails. Right. I do some booking emails. I do some social media. I would take care of my work. So I'm doing that anyway. You know, and, I'm, and I was still getting paid a full time salary. So that argument that I brought up at the top of the segment of, uh, oh, man, you know, fuck. These guys are getting paid a full-time salary for part-time work. Well, yeah, because it's that's what the structure of corporations are. There's levels of approvals and all this other idiosyncratic bullshit that comes along with it. We have to meet with the CMO. That was 
I used to hate those days. That was like two and a half hours, completely worthless. They would have these meetings where it's just like the chief marketing officer, you know, fucking jerking himself off and having everybody else jerk him off at the same time. It's just like, this is like, this is so gross and so boring and so pointless. And we achieved fucking nothing. Uh, we don't have to do that here. I have actually found that do, like having business meetings either over a phone call or over zoom or what have you. Yeah. We bullshit. Of course we do. We're, you know, it's like I'm working with friends I'm working with people that I care about. But we get to the business a lot faster. You know what I mean? And then we'll bullshit a little bit more and go, hey, I got to take it. And it's like, yeah, totally. All right, we'll see. You know, it, we're moving. We're not sitting in a room pandering to each other for two and a half hours. So you want to complain about getting paid a full-time salary and doing part-time work. No, no, no. That's not what the bosses are concerned about. They can't control you. That's what concerns them. They can't watch you and monitor you and say, ah, I see what you're doing. Up, oh, somebody's working on their website. And then if you're not doing that and you're just kind of sitting there, then they go, oh, pff, look at you not doing any work. And then you can get fired for it. Or they'll give you some bullshit busy work that means absolutely nothing. And it crushes your soul. At least when I'm at home, if I if it's like, okay, I got to get approval on this thing. Um, you know, I finished it. I'm going to send it out. And I know it's going to take 45 minutes. So maybe I can go and clean up the kitchen or make a nice meal or, you know, like fix something around the house. Go for a walk. You know, whatever it is. You can do something that makes you feel a little bit more productive when you work from home. You can't do that at the corporate job. You can't do that with the fucking office job. And again, if, if you like being in that environment and that gives you a sense of structure, then great. But I still think it's inappropriate for your boss to come and like check up on you. Are you doing the thing I want you to do? If not, I'll kick your cut your salary or I'll give you busy work. Who cares? If the job's getting done, it's getting done. That was the thing that always fucking bothered me. It's like I'm doing the job, I got it done. You had you I had to wait for 45 minutes to get approval, but you're gonna be mad at me because I chose to try to be more productive. I'm trying to reduce stress in my life so that you know, when I go home, I can actually have some time to myself. That was, I mean, but that's just, that's the horrifying part. They can't control you. That's what work from home does is it's more productive. It basically makes the company more money, which means that they have to share that fucking uh, wealth with, with their employees who are actually doing that. So it leads further into socialism <laughs> In, in the white collar, white collar world. And they don't, and they don't want, they, they don't want that. It's, it's just a control problem because they're sociopaths. Most of these fucking CEOs. They're fucking sociopaths. I say, you know, most of these places should continue their work from home. There should be a push for it. You know what? If if there are corporations that are pushing back and saying people need to come back to the office, even though productivity is increased because people are working from home and are in a better mental health state to do their work a lot better. And and these bosses are like, no, oh, my God. Oh, I can't control my employees. Oh, yeah. Freaking fuck it. It's just another reason we need a fucking general strike, isn't it? Let's look at some comments. Nothing wrong with, with comfort. Holly says nothing wrong with comfort. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, but if I'm the worker and I'm using equipment paying rent, you need to compensate me then. I think that's the other thing too, right? Um, is, is you are using your own equipment. You're not using uh, a computer. So they should tr try to compensate you for that, especially like, Okay, if I'm using my computer 
80 percent of the time for work then you know maybe there's some sort of way that they could figure out how to compensate that that's something new and, and that's something that needs to be discussed but yeah you're you're absolutely right you you're you're using your home internet right so so that should be uh taken care of like that part, part of that should be uh help compensate for that um yeah, there are little nuances of of working from home that you, we have to figure out how it fits into the paradigm of of work and labor in this country. I, you know, I, I think most of the people there. If we bring that to the negotiating table, they'll 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 say that they're not going to cover that sort of stuff. They'll go to they'll go towards the gig economy um, rhetoric in in terms of that. I I can almost guarantee that. I can almost guarantee that's what they'll do. I disagree with it, but I think that's where it'll go. Uh, but again. More reasons for a general strike. <clears throat> hey, if I can't afford my internet, there goes your productivity. Uh, ba -ba -da -ba -ba -ba. CG says, All, also weird, it, it's it's almost like people don't want to shove every dollar they make into their gas tank either. Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, I hated sitting in traffic. I still, I still hate it. I try to time my fucking grocery shopping to make sure that I don't hit any traffic in the city. Like you're, 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 you're helping improve, like working from home improves people's mental health for sure. Cause they don't have to deal with the stress of traffic. They don't have to deal with the stress of getting out of the house on a particular time, you know, and leaving work at a specific hour and hoping that the boss doesn't notice that I'm 10 minutes late or whatever. Yeah, I, I mean, there's so many benefits from it. Uh, and like you say, so are you getting the job done? Yes or no. And that's uh, that's what it's about. And and for, for the bosses, it's all about control. And that's, that's really what it boils down to. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit the like button. And please make sure you share this content out. Sharing is very important. Sharing is how independent media gets the word out there about topics that corporate media doesn't even want to mention on their networks. So it's really up to you guys. Corporate media very much depends on the people. We are people-powered media. That's what we really are. Uh, another great way to help if you're on stable financial ground is to uh, make a financial contribution to this channel. And you can do so over at krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. You can become a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets, early access to videos, bonus stand-up comedy and storytelling content, uh, a way for you to communicate directly with me, ask me questions, and other uh, premium content that uh, will be released on a monthly basis. Um, or you can make a one-time donation as well on that same website. Um, I also have uh, various stand-up comedy albums. I have about six comedy albums out right now. Uh, that are available on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. And most of them, if you get them off of Bandcamp, are available for a dollar or a, a pay-what-you-want pricing. And I also want to mention that I do have an online merch store. Uh, you can go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com, click on the Merch tab, and check out all of the designs that I've made myself. And the Julian Assange shirt, there is a Julian Assange shirt that's on the website. All the profit from the Julian Assange designs will be going to uh, pro-Assange activists such as Action for Assange, uh, Kevin Gastola, Richard Methurst, folks uh, 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 that, that are covering and talking about Assange. So I'm going to be making donations to them. Um, uh, it'll be 100% of the profits I make off of that shirt. Uh, thank you again for tuning in. Thank you again to all the people that have made contributions to the show, that regularly check out my content, that have subscribed to my channels. I, I very, very much appreciate it, and uh, and you guys help keep this uh, keep keep this this train a moving. So I, I very much appreciate that. Until the next video, we'll see you on the road. See you guys.